There are a few pieces of information that will be needed to program the hybrid subscriber. I recommend gathering these before getting started. The first will be the subscriber ID, or account ID. This is generally the same as the account number in the alarm panel. Next is the cipher code. This is going to be a four digit hex number that is the password to your AES radio mesh network. In addition, you'll also need the IP addresses of the multinet receivers on your network. If connected to the multinet receiver over the internet, the IP addresses will need to be external IP addresses with a port that is open for sending and receiving. Your IT department may need to allow communication through the firewall. I would also recommend the use of a port checker to confirm if the port is open or closed before getting started. And last is the IP group listed in the multinet receiver and will specify which business unit the alarm signals are getting sent to. We will go over how to access this later on in this video. In order to find the IP group, you will need to log in to the admin GUI of the multinet receiver. On the left hand side where it says business units, select the hyperlink and that will take you to a screen that shows all of the business units on your multinet receiver. Today we're going to send our signals to the tech support room business unit, so we'll use IP group 9797. Now that we have all our information gathered, we want to log in to the hybrid subscriber. And then we'll select the configuration tab. And as I said before, first we're going to program our sub ID. In this case, it's going to be CFD3. And I'll hit Save Changes. Every time you hit Save Changes, an update will appear at the top menu bar. But we're going to make all of our changes before we hit Update. I'm also going to leave entering the cipher code for the very last option. So we'll scroll down to where it says Central Receiver Configuration. And in the IP group, I'm going to go ahead and type 9797. And then our primary receiver, I'm going to go ahead and enter our IP address. And we're going to use the default port 9090. As it's listed here, you can use any port within this port range. We also have a secondary multi-net receiver, so I'm going to go ahead and enter the secondary multi-net receiver IP address. And we'll hit Save Changes at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter my cipher code. And then we'll hit Update. After we hit update, we always want to make sure we go back to the status screen and make sure that our hybrid subscriber is connected with the multi-net receivers. We'll give it a second to make sure everything initializes properly. Anytime you update the account ID, it will take you off of the network. So you will see an RF comms fail and an IP comms fail. That's basically the device resetting so that it can utilize the new subscriber ID. Now we can see our IP receivers are connected, both the primary and the secondary. The radio is back working, so we have link layer 1, netcon 5, and we can slowly see the routes propagating within the subscriber. We'll give it one more second just to watch and make sure um, everything initializes and wait until this status says normal. And there we go. We see we've gotten a normal status. Everything is reporting. It's connecting to the multi-net receivers. And all of our hardware settings look good. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any additional questions, please contact us at support.